They thought they'd seen it all in the frontline town of Avdiivka. But this past week has been worse than anything they've ever known. Shell fire, sporadic here for two and a half years, has suddenly become intense. A huge bombardment of artillery cut off the town's power and water for days. With temperatures dropping to minus 20, the cold could be every bit as deadly as the weaponry they face. At a respite centre, battle-ready soldiers serve hot food and tea to anyone who needs it. This place is basic to say the least, but it was set up in haste and under pressure. The heated tents are crowded with people swapping news and charging phones, but civilians are dying here, and grief sits side by side with anger. The weekend saw a lull, but people are still ready to retreat to their basements and their bunkers. But there are those who simply can't escape. In a three-roomed apartment in one of the town's endless tower blocks, we met Nella. She's old, she's infirm, and she suffers from asthma. She can't make it to the basement, she told me, so she just sits and waits, terrified, until it stops. In the room next door, the children sit drawing. This is how seven-year-old David passes the day. He seems happy, but a closer look at his jotter tells a different story. All he draws is violence, his mother tells me. It's disturbing to watch. Behind all of the immediate problems the people here face, there is another grinding concern. They feel completely abandoned, stuck in the middle of a deadly game of brinkmanship between their own government in Kiev and Moscow. And little wonder they're losing hope. Even the town's churchyard bears the scars of shell fire. Nowhere is sacred in this conflict. But people do still come here to find sanctuary. Several services every day, the congregation's always large. For those who've lost faith in the outside world, at least there's still somewhere left to turn.